Hello, I'm Dr. John White, Chief Medical Officer at WebMD, and welcome to Coronavirus in Context. Today, we're going to talk about the role of nutrition in the coronavirus epidemic. And I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Beth Kitchen. She's an assistant professor and registered dietitian at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Thanks for joining me, Dr. Kitchen. Thank you for having me. And I love the name. Oh, Kitchen. yes. And Kitchen. I'm sure you've heard it that. Is my, oh. It is my real uh, name. It's my born with name. Yes. So let's start off with, if we think that food is medicine, and we know that some foods might help with immunity, what should be on our grocery list? Well, one of the things that I really want to point out is that nutrition is not going to protect you from the coronavirus. So, you know, it's really important to listen to the experts who are telling you to wash your hands, keep that distance from people. Those are really the most important things. So I really, really want to stress that. Now, of course, nutrition does play a role in immunity, but that does not mean that you should go out and start popping pills, because one of the things that's really uh, important to understand is that you'll hear a lot of people saying we need to boost immunity. Well, you can actually over boost immunity for one thing. And so that really shouldn't be your goal. Your goal should be to maintain a strong immunity. One of the things that can really help with that is something as simple as getting enough sleep, getting enough rest. That can be really problematic for a lot of us at this time because we have some anxiety, we have some worries. So we have to deal with that. So even though we may have more time to sleep, okay. it may be a little bit harder. One of some okay. key foods. Are there some key foods though that you'd recommend? There are. I really recommend focusing on fruits and vegetables. Focusing on fruits and vegetables are going to give you things like vitamin C. We know that when we get enough vitamin C, we do support immunity. Uh, when you're getting all those really important phytochemicals that you get from fruits and vegetables. Does it matter if they're frozen or canned? You know, it, this can is a, that's frozen. such a good, that is such a good question because I'm trying to limit my grocery store time to once a week. I'm running out of my fresh fruits and vegetables. And so what I recommend is first of all, frozen. Frozen have just as much of those really key nutrients as fresh. Sometimes they have even more because when they flash freeze those, they're often at a point of freshness and maximal nutrient content. Think about our fresh fruits and vegetables. They have to travel sometimes. And so they might lose some of those, some of those nutrients. They sit in our refrigerators. And so they may be losing some of those. So frozen are really excellent and even canned still maintain quite a bit of their nutrient status. And in fact, some nutrients like beta carotene, you've heard of beta carotene, a very right. important antioxidant. Where do we get it? Where do we get that beta carotene? Oh, we get that from our deep orange um, fruits and vegetables, things like carrots, cantaloupe, spinach, even though it's green, is actually quite high in beta carotene. The predominant color that you have in spinach is chlorophyll, so it kind of masks it. But those are all really high in beta carotene. And we actually are able to use the beta carotene. It's more available to the to our bodies actually when it's been cooked. So canned fruits and vegetables are actually uh, sources of more available beta carotene to us. What, what else is on your grocery list? Well, for me, I've been, uh, like many people, I've been eating a lot of eggs. <laughs> I've been eating a lot of asparagus. I've been looking at those kind of sturdy fruits and vegetables. I've been buying things like potatoes and onions, and I'm drinking orange juice and all of these things that last quite a long time that I know are going to maintain their nutrient status and give me that protein. We haven't talked about protein yet. That's another really important nutrient to maintain your health, your immunity. Is it okay to have those comfort foods now? You talked a little bit about stress. <laughs> do, do we need to be doing better now? Or can we say, you know what, it's okay? To loosen it you up know, I'm a big fan of comfort foods all the time, <laughs> especially in times <laughs> like these. This is not a time 
for us to be going on some rigid diet and punishing ourselves. We deserve a little slack. So if macaroni and cheese is your favorite, I know I've bought some things that I typically don't buy, like, you know, goldfish crackers and some cookies that I typically don't have. And I'm like, oh, I kind of need this. That's okay now. now. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's actually always okay, you know, of course, in, in moderate amounts. But, you know, we also don't want to gain weight, you know. Yeah. If we're at a time when, you know, you're at home, you might be bored. It's really easy to run into the kitchen and snack a lot. So I always recommend have those comfort foods, the chocolate. It's Easter yeah. time coming up yep. for a lot of us. So, you know, that's an, an, that chocolate is important as well. But what I really recommend people do is portion it out, take it to the table, the couch, the porch, wherever you're going to go have that snack. Don't stand in the kitchen with the bag of chips open or uh, right. the, the box of cookies open. That's that's well, asking. We still buy them, maybe just not five bags. Of exactly. So read your you know read your portion sizes. Yeah. Use that food label. The new food labels are great. So, yeah. do we know. involve our kids in meal plans? Is that's that a good idea? I think it's really important at this time to make sure that you are planning out meals. Maybe not necessarily what you're going to eat. I don't ever know what I'm going to want for dinner. Some people like to plan out their whole day and that can be a good idea, but do plan to eat at particular times. You know, keep that breakfast, that lunch, that dinner, maybe a snack in the afternoon. And what that does is first of all, it gives your day structure, but what it also does is it keeps you from getting hungry. And that's the worst for things like cravings, overeating, binging. If you let yourself get hungry, that's when you really get into trouble. Or a handful of nuts good for that? Oh, that's, that's one of the things that I've been doing quite a bit of. I have a big bag of pistachios that my okay. mother gave me for Christmas, <laughs> huge bag. And so I've been stacking on that. And what I do is I put some in a bowl, I put some peanuts in with it, put a few goldfish crackers in it. So I get my goldfish crackers in there, but I make like a little kind of mini trail mix. And that's really satisfying. It's giving me a lot of really um, an important nutrients. And again, very satisfying. And that's been sort of my go-to afternoon snack. Uh, what about, we've been hearing about um, vitamin D and how yeah. that may impact immunity. And there's a lot of chatter online. What's right. your thoughts about vitamin D supplementation? So we, I, I actually uh, work in our osteoporosis patient education uh, clinic. Our patient, uh, our, our um, osteoporosis prevention and treatment clinic here at UAB. So we work a lot with vitamin D supplementation. And for vitamin D, it's very hard to get enough vitamin D from foods. Most of us are not able to make it from the sun because we're using sunscreen, we're not out in the sun enough. And vitamin D plays a role in bone health, but it also plays a role in immunity. But I really wanna stress that more is not better. If your vitamin D levels are healthy, piling on more vitamin D is not going to make your immunity stronger. However, if you're low in vitamin D and you're not getting enough, then you might have a compromised immune system because of that. So I do recommend that most people get some vitamin D supplementation. I do every day. Now, again, you don't want to overdo it. And so that's important. Don't super supplement with that. 600 so international units. Yeah, that would be what I recommend. You know, we kind of base our recommendations on what our patients' blood levels are. Most people don't know their blood levels. So what I recommend is a, roughly about a thousand units of vitamin D um, every day from your over-the-counter supplement. So if you take a multivitamin, if you take a calcium supplement that has D in it. So it may not be that you need a separate vitamin D right. supplement. And recommendations can vary between 600 to 1200. Exactly. Days. It can, it can do some of our patients, if they're low in vitamin D, we actually go up to two, three, 4,000 a day for short periods. No, and that's a great point. Right. And then when they get their levels where they're healthy, then we back them down because again, too much vitamin D can actually be detrimental. And that's true of all nutrients. So just be very careful. If you want to take, for instance, a vitamin C supplement, if you're thinking, well, maybe vitamin C can help my immunity. I'm not going to tell you not to do that, but don't go over a thousand milligrams a day. It can cramp Sorry, to, what about zinc? People have been asking about zinc. A lot of people are talking about zinc. And one of the things that we talk about with zinc is that in the form of zinc lozenges, it seems mm -hmm. to stimulate uh, the immune system. However, we know that with things like colds. And what we usually tell people to do with that is to take it 
right at the start of a cold because these levels are very high. And if you overdo it for too long a period of time, again, you could get toxic right. levels of that. Right. We also know that zinc nose sprays can actually cause a permanent loss of smell. Right. So again, be very careful with these supplements. Now, getting enough zinc from foods, absolutely. And that's where your um, pro high protein foods kind of go along with zinc. So what are those examples? Tell us yeah, those. Things things. like meat, seafoods, tuna fish, things yeah. of that nature uh, yeah. usually have good, good amounts of zinc in them. And then real quickly on meal planning, you, you might have a lot of people in the house now that you otherwise <laughs> might not have had. You're limited in being able to go to the grocery store. Sure. How do you manage some complex meal planning? Is it yeah. you get what you get and you don't get upset or do you, or do you try to feed? Those, those bulk meals that you can make. I'm a big believer in pasta. Uh, okay. Coming from an Italian American mother, you know, we, mm -hmm. we, we eat a lot of pasta. Right here, so yeah. I want to do these big, you know, beans and rice and pasta dishes that you could put in a big pot. Um, I have also been recommending to people that a great way to support the economy is to go out and do that curbside pickup takeout with various restaurants in your community. It's a great way to get some variety in your eating, get out of that cooking rut. I'm getting so tired of the same foods that I cook over and over again. Uh, it's also a great time though to tune in to radio, TV, social media. A lot of people are talking about this. Uh, a lot of chefs are coming on and talking about all these great things that you can go to. I, I have a lot of really fun things that I do called cooking with cans, where I take okay. a can of you know chopped tomatoes and maybe a can of, say, clam sauce and mix those together and let it simmer. And it makes a wonderful pasta sauce. And so getting creative with, you've got, with things that you've got in your cabinet, you know, take some of those things like like beans and rice, and then flavor them up with some other things that you have uh, around the house. And you might be surprised you discover some really neat dishes. Great idea. Good, good time to experiment and a great reminder to exactly. support our local restaurants. I want to thank you, Dr. Kitchen. for Thank you. Me. I've enjoyed this. And I want to thank you for watching Coronavirus in Context. I'm Dr. John White.